preached that God is silent about it. Yeah. Do you believe that? Uh, there's a lot to do that. They say that God is silent. Is God silent? No. No, he's not. Okay. Let me ask this question. Have you ever heard him? Have you ever heard him? Let's go. Let's see what the Lord has to say. Verse 27 of chapter 10 of John, it says here, My boy, my children, oh, shoot, let me back up here again. My sheep hear my voice. Excuse me. They can get it. Ooh. They don't. Sorry about that. Recognized him, you know, and again, isn't it amazing how that people sometimes it's going on? Okay, all right. So sometimes in life and everything, you you don't know. You, you might not know someone. You might not see someone. You might not recognize someone, or you hadn't seen someone in a long time, and they just speak, and you hear, and you can recognize that voice. Uh, and uh, again, I remember several years ago, uh, we had a dispatcher who had left us and everything, and had come back, and uh, she'd gone on to a different agency and everything, and this different agency and everything was. Uh, Going, uh, going through and everything, and she was doing some work in the office, and, and I was getting ready to sign on. When I signed on that morning and everything, when I hollered at dispatch, a familiar voice came across. And as soon as she re started to respond to me, I knew who I was talking to. I'd worked several years with her. Isn't it amazing how the, we can identify someone by their voice? I've told you many times over. Whenever I'd be wrestling or playing football or whatever, even though there may be thousands of people in the in the con in the uh, uh, stadium and everything like that, my dad would holler at me, and I would know exactly where he was at by people, by someone's voice. God's that way also. Now again, I'm gonna say this now. 
When God speaks, it might be not be an audible voice, but you will know when he speaks. Amen? Uh, each and every one of us has been saved, has heard the voice of God. When he calls your name, when he knocks upon your heart, Or I had the opportunity to come up here. And I was asking the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to do? Do you want me to go to Wasson Valley? If you want me to go to Wasson Valley, you show me. You tell me. And I was praying on the way to here one Wednesday night. And I was coming by down at Seven Mile Ford. I started right there at the, the Ford Motel coming around through there. And I was praying all the way down through there. I said, Lord, if this is where you want me to be, you convict my heart. Like the night I got saved. And before I got across the interstate bridge, my heart was about to explode. Was that God speaking to me? Amen? That was God speaking. At night, the Lord confirmed it in more ways than one. I had a dream. Some of the ladies of Faith Fellowship down there was asking me, said, Now, Mark, where are you going to go? Now, don't, get, don't take no offense to this. I said, I'm going to be going to Watson Valley. I'm going to be a pastor up there. And the lady looked at me and said, why do you want to go up there? They don't even have a, a toilet. And I said, that's because what God's sending me. And God told me to go. They went, oh. And I said, I want to be in God's will. So, 17 years later, 16, 17 years later, we're still here. To God be the glory. Have you ever heard God speak to you? Several weeks ago, uh, several months ago, we started asking you to pray for revival. Amen? Y'all remember me telling me? We want to pray. We just don't want to sit a day. We want to pray for who and when. Well, it's amazing how God works. It's amazing how God works. In the last several months, the name Avery Sheets has come up many times. Was that by coincidence? No. One night, and we've been praying about this for several weeks, several months, no doubt about it. One Wednesday night, we was here a little early. We always get here a little early so they can practice on the, on the organ and everything. And I walked to the back back there, and there's a card up back there from Avery Sheets and his wife, Linda. And God said, there's your man. I went, wow. I called him up the next day. I'd love to. Have you ever heard God speak to you? Simple little things like that. When God called me to preach, we had miscarried with twins. And when we went back to confirm the pregnancy with Katie, when I seen the heartbeat on the monitor, it was like it was a, like it was an audible voice. First thought that came through my mind was, "Now you can preach." And I knew what God was saying. If you don't announce your calling to preach, you won't see this heartbeat again. Whew. 
God has a way of getting your attention. Amen? God has a way of getting your attention. And I say, Lord, let me recognize your voice. Let me hear your voice. And let me be obedient to your voice. Amen? If we're not obedient to God's voice, if we're not obedient to God's voice, what can happen? I'll show you that just in a minute. But we see here that we see that here that his sheep hear his voice. Some people preach today that God doesn't speak anymore. Well, if he did, if he doesn't speak, my my Bible's in red letters here. Then apparently they're calling God a liar. Amen. He goes on down through here, verse four. It says, "And the sheep follow him, and they know his voice." Verse 5 here, it says, And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. Then it goes over to here in verse 16. It says, And other sheep I have, and again, I'm going to say this, again, Jesus came to his people, the Jewish people, right? And we the Gentiles, we are the other sheep, Okay? And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. He must bring us, amen? Now go on. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Amen? Not many. Not many paths to, the, to the heaven. Amen? Understand that. Not many paths. Only one. And that's through Jesus Christ. Amen? He is the shepherd. As I read this morning here, going down through here before Sunday school and everything, and it says there in verse 30 of chapter 10, I and my Father are one. Amen? Jesus spoke that, and understand, there is only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen? So we see here that the sheep, how do the sheep hear the voice? And again, he talks about this over in Romans. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, it says, Then faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen? Well, again, hearing by the word of God. We have to hear the word. We have to hear the word preach that he will convict, be able to convict our hearts. We have to see, hear the word. Yeah, over in Psalms chapter 29 and verse 4, it says, The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. He is. It is powerful, folks. If the voice of God spoke this world into existence, and he spoke it into existence, and he took man, and he formed the man from the dust of the earth, and breathed the breath of life into him, and he became a living soul. The word of God, the voice of God, is very, very powerful. Amen. Again, over in Revelation, we're talking about they're going to line up on one mountainside and the world's going to line up on the other mountainside and, and God's going to speak and can take it all out. Amen. Again, his voice is very powerful. Over again, John chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. He's very powerful. It's, uh, it's a convicting power. Amen. We understand that. Well, see, again, when we see that we understand the hearing the voice of God, we understand this. If people are not hearing the voice of God, we've got a problem. One of two things is going on. Number one, they're not saved, right? It says, my sheep. If they're not saved, they're not going to hear that voice, are they? They're not going to understand what he's doing. Again, we understand that. And if this other situation comes up, or the other the reason that they don't re, don't understand, don't hear God's voice is they don't hear. They don't hear. They are not trained to hear. They're not trained. They don't recognize His voice whenever He's speaking. Okay, understand this. When we're little bitty babes, are we born? Are we born to hear? Right. Unless you're deaf, you hear. Right. You hear. Now, let me ask you this. You may hear, 
And as you grow older, you come into the childhood. You hear mommy and daddy holler at you, but you don't always obey, right? We have to learn to listen, to the listen to the right things. We have to learn, and we take and we listen to the right things to learn to do the right things. As we grow older, we start becoming more mindful and hear more details, right? And we kind of hone those skills to be able to hear better. I'm going to flip over here to Samuel chapter, uh, now we're here to Samuel uh, chapter 3. It talks about this real quickly. And when uh, uh, the prophet Samuel, the prophet Samuel, okay? The prophet Samuel here was uh, brought up to Eli. Again, we understand, I've uh, got to give you some background about that, how Hannah had prayed for a son and prayed for a son and prayed for a son, and God gave her a son, and she promised that, God, if you'll give me a child, if you'll give me a child, I'll give that child back to you. And when, as soon as uh, the, the child was weaned, she took him to the temple and gave him back to God to be able to be raised and, and, and to be a, a prophet, to, to, be, to be a servant, excuse me, a servant of the Lord, okay? So here, uh, Eli had been raising old Samuel in the ministry here. It talks about this in verse 1 and everything and how the, and verse, uh, and it goes on down through here and how that God starts calling old Samuel. In verse 4 here, and it says, and the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, here am I. Again. And he went running to Eli here and going, you know, what do you want? And he didn't recognize that it was God speaking to him. Is that the way we are too? As a babe in Christ, do you recognize when God's always speaking to you? No, not always. Even here, it talks about this. Four different times that God calls to Samuel, calls out to Samuel, and he didn't recognize Understand. Now, when, we're, when he's calling out to Samuel here, did Eli hear this? No. Eli wasn't hearing this. Who was hearing it? Only Samuel. When God calls upon your heart, is your mom and dad sitting next to you? Do they hear it? Only you. Right? Does a preacher hear that? Preacher can see it on your face. He can see you squirming in the sea. But no, he doesn't hear it either. Only person is between you and God. Kathy, whenever God confirmed my uh, to, uh, confirmed that pregnancy and everything, and He spoke to my heart, did you see it? Do you hear it? No, she didn't. Only me. She didn't know it till I told her. Amen. God spoke. God spoke. Thank God I surrendered. Thank God I surrendered. First time, Eli didn't, or Samuel, see, Samuel didn't understand what was going on. Second time, verse 6 here, and the Lord called yet again. Samuel. Samuel arose, and he went to Eli and said, Here I am I. Third time, verse 8, Samuel. Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he went, arose, and he went to Eli. Eli understood here, and he said, Next time, if God calls, say, Here am I, thy servant. Verse 10, and the Lord came and stood and called at a other time, as, as, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel answered and spake, for thy servant heareth. Hmm. Sort of like he's standing and knocking. Romans, or Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, verse 10. Romans, or Revelation chapter 10, verse 3 here. What's it say about that? 
chapter 3, verse 10, it says here. Uh, chapter 3, verse 10, excuse me. Wait a minute, maybe I've got that wrong. Chapter tw uh, Verse 20, excuse me. Chapter 20, uh, verse 20 of chapter 3 of, of Revelation. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man heareth my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. It says here that he was standing beside Samuel's bed here. I wonder what he was doing. Was he knocking at his door? Samuel opened the door and the Lord came in. Samuel was a great prophet over in the Old Testament. Amen? Samuel was a great prophet. You say, well, that's Old Testament, preacher. Anything like that in the New Testament? How about over in Acts chapter 9? Acts chapter 9 here. Jumps over here. You remember a guy called Saul? Remember a guy called Saul? You remember how old Saul was going about and he was he was going out and actually was being a good servant and everything, going out and killing Christians, right? Yeah. He was. He was one of the most feared men in the Bible, right? He said, but because Saul was doing his job so well, did you know that Christianity was spread all over the world? Because people were running from Saul. You realize that? And they, the, people, the people were happy. They were going to stay in one little place, and they were happy. They were in the comfort zone right there, and they weren't going to go anywhere else. And God talked and brought this old man Saul and scattered them all over the nations. <laughs> Imagine that. I told you, God will get your attention one way or the other, right? So they were spread out here. Oh no, Saul, you know, he was he was doing his job and everything. And he was on the road to Damascus one day to go on and get another death warrant, to go out to pick all these people up and take them and crew and, and and execute them. The Christians. And he's on the road to Damascus one day, and verse 4 of chapter 9 here it says, And he fell to the earth, and he heard a voice. What did that voice say? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He heard a voice. A lot of times, uh, preachers today, and some preachers today are saying that Jesus doesn't speak anymore, that God doesn't speak anymore. All I can say is they're preaching a lie. He's speaking, but people have got a deaf ear to him. Amen? They don't get in the Bible. They don't study the Word. And God can't, and God, I ain't saying he can't, but it limits how he can speak. Amen? Sort of like putting a muzzle on him, Right? Folks, we have to open the Word. We have to study the Word. We have to see the Word. We have to hear the Word. Romans chapter 10, it's in verse 17. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. How are you supposed to hear if you can't hear it? Amen? Why do you come to church? To hear it taught, right? To hear it taught that God will be able to speak to our heart that we'll be able to do better. Amen? Amen? What happens if you refuse to refuse, refuse to hear the word? All right. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 9 talks about this. It says in verse 13, it says, And the Lord saith, Because thou hast forsaken my law. What was that you talking about this morning, there, Tony? You're talking about the covenants and the laws and everything and the commandments. And it says, Because thou hast forsaken my law, which I set before them. And have not obeyed my voice. It says that he would take and he would turn them over uh, and they would walk after the imagination of their own hearts. And their father Baal. Uh, again, understand. He's saying, I'll let you do what you want to do. Destroy yourself. Ooh. I mean, God's that kind of God. He'll let you. Okay? Over in Psalms, chapter 81, verse 11, it says uh, here, it says, 
but my people would not hearken to my voice. And Israel and none uh, would, uh, would none of me. And then it says, So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walketh in their own counsel. What's happening to our nation right now? They turn their back on God. They don't want to hear from God. They don't want to worship God. They don't want nothing to do with God. And are we suffering the consequences? Amen? Judges, chapter 2, verse 20. And the anger of God was hot against Israel because, and again, I'm, I'm bitten, taking bits and pieces here and putting it together, because their fathers have not hearkened unto my voice. Folks, what do we need to do? We need to obey the voice of God. Right? We need to obey. In Exodus chapter 19, 3 through 5 here, it talks about, and, my, and, and the Lord called out unto Moses again, and, Lord's talking to Moses here, and it's verse 3, and it says here that in verse 5, it says, If thou wilt obey my voice indeed, and keep my, uh, keep my covenant, then he's going to make them a peculiar treasure. Wow. If they do these things, what have we done as a nation? Flat out turned their back on him and walked away. What have we done as many, a lot of churches turned their back on him and walked away from him. Amen. God says, just obey my voice. Obey my voice. And I'll do all of these things for you. Samuel here, he didn't recognize the Lord calling out to him, did he? No. But when he did and he accepted, and he accepted and he did what God said to do, he made him a most powerful prophet. Amen. Our nation was founded upon God. And now they don't want God. They want to put God away. They want to get so far away from God. Amen. What happens if we hearken to his voice? Exodus chapter 13, verse 19, it says, or chapter 18, chapter 18, verse 19, it says, Hearken unto my voice, and I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. What's God say? If you hearken unto my voice, I'll be with you. I'll be your God. I'll be with you. I'll fight your battles. I will, I will go to war for you. I will take care of you. I'll provide for you. I'll bring you through the Red Sea. I'll give you, I'll give you uh, a quail and run through the camp whenever you're hungry. I will take care of you. I'll meet your needs if you'll just obey my voice. Amen. I know Brother Steve talks about we brought them Israelites out of, out of uh, captivity so many times we've got sand in our own shoes. I, I, I understand that. But why do, we, why do we do that? Why do we teach that? Because the God that brought them out of Egypt can do the same for us today. Amen? He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And we must, we must learn by their mistakes. Amen? If we don't, we'll do the same thing. Amen? Revelations. Chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens it, I will come into him and will sup with him and he will be with me. Amen. Woo! <laughs> I want to be with him, don't you? Amen. Jeremiah, chapter 11, verse 4, it says here, Obey my voice and do them according to all which I command, uh, call, command you. So shall ye be my people, and I will be your God. I want him to be my God. How about you? I want to be on the right side of God. I don't want to be on the, the judgment side of God, do you? Amen. See, if we would just obey, obey his voice. Amen. 
we wouldn't have to have all these problems that goes on if we just obey his voice. But no, we don't want to obey. We want to put him out. Amen? Last week we preached upon the simple fact getting saved and getting, uh, getting saved that you have to be drawn. After you're drawn, after God speaks to your heart, you have to open the door. Amen? You have to open the door. When he's standing there knocking, he knocked on old Samuels four different times, and he accepted. How many times has he knocked on your heart? Amen. He might not knock the fifth time. When God knocks on your heart, obey. When God convicts your heart, obey. When God speaks to your heart, obey. Amen. Or you can do like the world. You can shut him out. And how does that work out for you? It won't. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed. You're sitting here today and you say, well, gee, I, I don't know that I've ever heard God speak to my heart. Then you might need a Savior. Amen? If you have never heard him speak to your heart, would you just like to lift up your hands and say, would you pray for me, preacher? Is there anyone? There's anyone. Anyway, let me rephrase that question. Maybe you just don't recognize him speaking to your heart. You know that burden you're getting right now that says, hey, you need something in your life? That's him touching your heart. He said, let me in. Let me in. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? If you're sitting here today and you've got lost family members out there and you they're not showing any evidence that they know Jesus Christ is their Savior and you'd like to see them get saved, would you like to lift up your hand and say pray for them? I see those hands all over, amen? Let's pray for those. Let's pray for those, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, come to you. Bow down in your presence, Lord. Lord, I know that these hands that went up here all over the place, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'd take and touch those family members before it's everlasting too late. Lord, we see what's going on over in the Middle East, Lord. We know that you're going to be coming back soon, Lord. And I pray, I pray, Lord, that you would be, uh, that you would just take and touch their hearts before it's everlasting too late. Lord, we know that you're going to come back, Lord, and you're going to take your church out of here, Lord. And Lord, I pray that everybody will be ready. Now, Lord, I pray that we would be obedient to your word, Lord. We'd hear your, your voice, Lord, and we'd open up our heart, Lord, and we would do what you said to do. Now, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good to us, Lord. And I thank you for this message, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you're taking the apply to our lives, that we go out here into a lost and dying world, Lord, and help spread the word. Now, Lord, lead us and guide us, because we ask these things in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Remember again, Brother Bradley will be with us on Wednesday night. And I'll be, uh, he'll be up this Wednesday night, so be with him. I'll be here with that. We've got the, the message or the the uh, uh, teens down in the fellowship hall, and we're doing the uh, cults and the really different religions in the world and everything, so that we can hopefully lead them the right way with that situation and everything. So uh, be here with us, and uh, we've got a, our, our revival will be coming up in May, and the 19th of May we'll be starting it with Brother Avery Sheets uh, at 7 o'clock, and again be seven uh, that Sunday through Wednesday, so tell people about that. And then Vacation Bible School will be well before we know it. So let's pray about these things, okay? 